Hi everyone, I'm Silverwolf and I thought I would do a video documenting my latest plush which is uh, a fiery character from The Labyrinth. Now if you grew up in the 80s or even if you didn't you may have heard of this film, it's called The Labyrinth and it was not actually very popular in the box office but soon became a cult film. It starred David Bowie and most people remember David from the film. But uh, these characters were my favourites from the film and they were sort of they're very hard to describe they look like this with beaky faces I made this out of polymer clay this is going to be his face I'm going to have a go at making a clay faced um, art doll he's going to be uh, fully armatured and poseable so yeah they, they have like a bird's beak and they could take their heads off and stuff like that and they were always my favourite uh, when I was a kid and I saw someone else recently on the internet make one of these and I thought you know what I'm going to have a go and see if I can do one too. So here's the, the face, I made it out of sort of a peachy colour polymer clay, the, uh, the lighting in here is terrible and the eyes as you can see they're follow me eyes so he looks at you when you move his head which to some people is probably quite creepy. Uh, the, the face will be painted as well uh, at the moment it's just all one colour, the peachy colour but I will shade him and paint him um, when I put him together after I've sewn his his fur on. So I have um, a massive pattern here and um, you can probably see all these pattern pieces this is probably the most complex pattern I have ever done for any plush so far uh, which is also nice as a, as a challenge you know so we've got this is his main fur colour which is this ginger colour he is two-tone he's also got cream fur as well and he'll have parts of him that are suede, the suede is over there and yeah so basically I wasn't going to do a video about this but I thought because he's going to be so complex I thought I would uh, document this because as you know I've already done a video about Flick and uh, well not that Raymond but a different Raymond that went to my friend so um, hopefully by the time this video is released those two, the Raymond and the Ivo, will have sold because they're both looking for homes at the moment. So that's what I thought I'd do and it'll be interesting to see how I get on with this. I have ordered from Moore's Moore, the place I got the Furby spine, um, a plastic ball jointed spine for him which also works for uh, doing arm and leg armatures as well and his head should be poseable and the reason, main reason I've ordered the spine, I was going to wire armature him but he's quite big the reason that I've ordered this plastic one is because of the, the weight of his face I believe his head will probably drop forward unless it's given stability so I thought I'd have the spine going up into the neck and head and uh, hopefully it will make him able to sit up properly instead of his head always flopping forward. Now I'm not entirely sure how to fix the face onto the fabric. I have uh, several art dolls of my own. This is one of them. She is, I can't actually remember who made her, but they were doing these art dolls called Drakes. So I got them to make one looks like my character a Vista. So it's basically a Vista as a Drake. And she's got I think it's um, a resin face but you can see her head's quite heavy and it flops down and her paws are quite heavy as well um, so that is what my plush is going to do if, uh, if I don't have a spine in him he will just flop like she's doing there although to be fair the fact that she's floppy is really, is really adorable I mean look at her face, she's so cute I really love her, I just wish I could remember who made her it was quite a while ago that I commissioned her. I must have been about God, seven or eight years. I've had her for a long time. So anyway, enough of that. I'm going to cut these pieces out. The next part of the video will be, well, you'll see all my pattern pieces all cut out. It's now the next day and I have a pile of, well, parts really. Pattern pieces for the fiery. I would have done this last night but I was too involved in Animal Crossing because I had to catch a cicada shell before they 
well stopped being available at the end of August and since it was the last day today I managed to finally catch one yesterday it has taken me two months to catch one which is ridiculous especially for something that's a shell and not an actual cicada anyway so here's our pile of body bits and pieces we've got all these suede things uh, we've got tail and there's a hand there and then these are all the gingery bits and the creamy bits as well so I'm going to sew a few of these together uh, quite slowly and see how far I get. I've got to move very slowly and think carefully about each step of this because I don't want to get anything wrong and have to go back and unstitch everything or whatever. Uh, I have actually cut some of these these pale bits, not these precise ones, but I do have some pale bits. And I think I've cut them with the fur going the wrong way. It's going the right way. It's uh, basically his wrists are a, a sort of a paler colour. It's going the right way for the arm, but I don't know if I want the fur to actually go over the hand, in which case it's going to have to be cut facing this way. As opposed to that, which is what it's look, looking like at the moment. So I'll stitch together the parts like, for example, his tummy that I know that I have cut correctly and work up from there. So this is what we've got so far, this is today's work. So, so I suppose this is the last nearly two hours work. As you, as you can see I've started putting together the bits and pieces I have. I'm doing it as I said quite slowly because I want to make sure I get everything right. So you've got one side of him, this is the middle part of him and this is the other side with a little white fluffy tummy there. Uh, the feet are made out of suede as you can see I haven't well these are his legs his feet won't be made out of suede actually they'll be made out of this but I need to do uh, polymer clay soles of his feet and I need to think about how I'm going to do those I haven't done his wrists because as I said the uh, I don't think I've sewn them I've uh, cut the material the fur going the right way so his hands and wrists haven't been stitched on yet that's the end of his tail that's his tail which will be inside out and what I'm going to do is when I sew them together, obviously you sew him inside out and turn him out the right way. But what I will do with the tail is I will sew this part onto him inside out, turn him out the right way. And then I will sew this onto the end. So sew these two bits together, back to back like that. And then they'll go onto the end of the tail when it's been pulled out the right way. Because as you can see, if I sewed this on inside out, there's no way that I'd get that through that tiny little little space there which is why I've left it free so that I can sew this onto here and then uh, just stitch up the end so that's what I'm planning to do with that it's also remembering um, in what order to do these things because if I go too fast and jump ahead and do it without thinking then I will probably miss something and have to go back and undo my work and I don't want to do that because undoing sewing is very is very annoying so I'm gonna see how I do with that so I'm gonna think on what my next plan of action is and go on from there another update on the fiery plush he's not actually his face isn't attached it's just kind of sitting in the head but this is what it'll look like once his face is uh, stuck onto the front of the head. Um, to stick it on I may have described this in a previous clip in this video. I'm going to put glue on the back so he sticks to there and then I've got this bit of cardboard that I'm going to put inside to sort of make it sturdy and I'm using super glue so it should work. First time I've done this I had asked some friends for help but they haven't got back to me so I guess uh, they're busy so uh, I'm just doing it myself. His ears have also been stitched but they're not turned the right way out yet. So I will do that and see what I'm going to do with those. I'm thinking about putting card in them because they're going to flap around otherwise. Uh, and if I do put card in them I'm going to sew them on the outside not the inside which might be easier to be fair. Um, so turn them out the right way and then just stitch them from the outside instead of from the inside and turning it out the right way. Um, obviously I won't be able to do that 
stitching them from the inside if they've got card in them because when I turn them the right way out the ears will get bent so um, yeah like I said I'll probably do that stitch them from this way around as opposed to turning it back out again and the next little clip should be his head finished Ooh, exciting times uh, this is actually going to I'm going to paint this it's not going to be this icky peach colour it's going to be shaded and painted and his ears will be as well in time well here we go he's got his face and his ears all attached and this is what he's looking like at the moment obviously his ears and everything are a bit floppy I'm waiting for the glue to dry a bit better and I'm going to try pulling on the face to see whether it comes away uh, what I did with the cardboard what I was originally going to do was uh, I was going to glue his face to the material and then uh, put glue on the cardboard and uh, stick the cardboard on so there was extra glue but I figured how am I going to press the material onto the back of his head well back of his face with my fingers because the glue will just go straight through the material and I'll stick my fingers to it which isn't a good idea so what I did was I held the cardboard inside where it was supposed to be on the back of that and uh, used up a whole stick of glue they're only small um, just putting glue all over the material and then I pressed the cardboard and his face together with the material in between and it seems to have worked because the material is quite once you trim away the fur and I did trim away all the fur um, behind so, so obviously it would stick better once you trim away the fur the actual material the backing of it is quite thin so um, it was easy to sort of for it to soak through onto the card so hopefully that will be good uh, fingers crossed but I will do more tests to it I'm gonna go down and have something to eat because it's ten past six so I think it's time for food but he is looking like a fiery so I'm pretty happy with him at the moment his uh, face and ears like I said will be shaded and sort of will have like color put on them it's not going to be that awful flesh color it looks quite creepy on this video to be fair uh, so I will see you all in the next part which might be this head being stuffed and here he is stuffed doesn't look too bad uh, I thought the head would come out a little bit too big for the face but in all honesty it's alright it is really heavy though with that face because it's not made of epoxy or resin or anything like that polymer clay is quite heavy so we will see how well he works with this attached to the body but I'm hoping to run the spine up through the head to give it some more stability if it can hold up a long furby I'm sure it can hold up his head and I'm, I'm just holding it closed at the bottom here so I can move it around and show you but that's what he looks like so next I will start putting the body together so this strange crumpled looking thing is his body I've sewn it as far as I can so here you can see that's what it looks like you can see his arms and his legs where his feet are gonna go there's his tail um, I've left holes at the ends of his fingers because I'm actually gonna give him fingertips but I need to make those from polymer clay and they're going to have wire going through them so his hands will be poseable and his feet I have left this uh, just loose so that I can make a foot to go under there with toes and everything um, his legs here came out a little bit thin kind of a bit too thin really but once they're stuffed they'll probably be a bit better and fill out more I think his body is looking quite good and his tail I was going to like underwire it, I may still uh, the end is very heavy in comparison to the rest so it's kind of floppy so I might just put some wire going along here again I may have made this bit too thin but it's, it's no big problem really and here is the spine this is the same spine that I used for the long furby so this will be going all up through the, the uh, back of him also I will use it to join his arms possibly his legs but I'll definitely run it up through his neck because his head is very heavy 
so uh, hopefully it'll give the head and neck more stability um, by putting that along. I'm going to stitch the spine I think along the inside I think I will I'm not I'm not entirely sure I may just stuff around it because it should hold itself in place anyway because I'm doing I'm using some joints to put it uh, through his arms and possibly his legs um, but we will see how that goes the next thing I'm going to do is a polymer clay parts for his fingers and feet so I've done fingers and toes for this guy now uh, so the feet will actually go in there so that will be the bottom of his foot like that and I've got his hands here so you can see they will slip inside and the fingers will stick out like that so that's all his polymer clay pieces done I should be able to put him together now Ooh, exciting times so it's now 1am and I've finally got these fingers to look how I want them to I haven't stuck the ends down yet but uh, what I was trying to do was I was trying to get that wire with the little fingers on through his arm and along into his hand and then push the fingertips along the length of his fingers the only problem was the fingers weren't wide enough for the fingertips to go through so I had to cut down uh, one side of each finger just to sort of squeeze them out and then I had to stitch it all back up again luckily I can do ladder stitches so it looks like it was uh, always meant to be that way but I finally got his fingers where they should be uh, so the next thing for his hands will be, I will very carefully stuff them, uh, that will be fun, but since these are all still open, I could probably put a little bit of stuffing in that way as well as in the other way. Since he's got very long arms, it's going to be difficult to sort of get the stuffing to go all the way down to his hands, so I might have to stuff them the other way, and then finally stick these down so that they're all sealed up. And of course I will do his feet in a similar way probably to hide in his head. So I've stuck the first foot on and uh, I stuck it around the edge leaving the front part open so I could just put some stuffing inside because it's going to be too hard to do it by trying to get it down the leg. So now you can see a before and after so that's what it will look like on the other foot. This is what it looks like now and I'll be doing the same with this one on that foot. Okay, here's the next update on the fiery. He has his skeleton. There's his armature. Um, I've laid him out flat so you can see how it works. And it's all been put together. That's where the chest essentially would be where all these bits come off the arms and the neck and the lower part. Um, I could have uh, got a pair of pliers to do this with because it's easy enough to take apart, you just overbend it. Uh, the pliers to put it together again cost $27. Instead of doing that, my dad is an engineer, so we put our heads together and worked out how to get them together without paying out such a vast amount of money. Um, so I can take this apart and put it together at will now, which is very useful. So I've measured it all out and uh, I'm trying to work out how I'm going to put it in. Um, where his hands are, as you remember seeing when I put the fingers together, there is a piece of wire that goes along the arm. I'm going to attempt to wrap that wire around this so it becomes all one thing with no gaps in between. That's going to be very difficult because his arms are very long and very thin, so I'll probably be swearing quite a lot. Um, I might stitch the spine in or at least hold it with a couple of stitches going along his back just to keep it in position the stuffing should do the rest also his feet are now both finished and when I was making them I don't know if I mentioned uh, I left the front bit open and uh, stuffed it and then sealed it up so I don't have to put stuffing all down the legs and try and get them into his feet so the next thing is 
I'm going to stuff his legs up to about here. I was going to put armatures in his legs, but I don't think I'll bother. Um, because it, they, the legs are a bit thin, and I think it might um, distort his shape somewhat. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to stick with what I've got. He will be a, probably a sitting plush anyway, and even if I put an armature in his legs, he wouldn't stand. So, uh, yeah. Next thing I'm going to do is stuff the legs. And as you can see now, I've stuffed the legs, and he's stood up. I might put wire in the tail to give it some more stability, but I'm not sure. Now you can see he's got his fiery legs. So the next thing is going to be putting in his armature and screaming. So, poor lighting I know, but I have put the armature inside him. So uh, that's the part that's going to go into his head. I may shorten it. He doesn't actually really stand by himself, but I've kind of um, got him standing up there. Uh, sit him down here. His legs did come out a little bit small and spindly, unfortunately, but I knew his legs would be like that anyway. The feet, as a, as a result, are not really big enough. Um, but his tail, I have underwired it. So it bends, and uh, the fluffy bit on the end of his tail is kind of floppy again. It wasn't really what I planned to do. So all the fingers here, the tips of the fingers, that's all stuck down. So he does at least have bendy fingers, like that. As you can see, and his arms are bendy as well. His whole body is bendy so I, I need two hands but the spine runs right down to the bottom of him. In fact it runs a little bit too far down because it's uh, he's got you can feel the bottom of the spine actually underneath him which isn't really good but it won't notice. So uh, I'm pretty happy with how he's going. Yeah there's a few design flaws but it's not too bad. At the end of the day I you know, went into this project because the fireys are my favourite creatures from Labyrinth. I saw someone else had made one, I thought I'd try and make my own. Yes, it's not as good as their one, but this is the first time I've ever done anything like this, and they're a very experienced artist, so it wouldn't be as good anyway. But I think I'm doing pretty well. On to the next part. Again, apologies for the bad lighting, but he is fully assembled now. As you can see, his arms are posed there. He can do all sorts of poses with his hands and arms, fingers and tail. His legs are not poseable because he just sort of sits on them. And I've overcome the front of the, uh, the head being so heavy by, of course, like you saw, the armature was going up through his head. So that also makes his head poseable. I can, um, I can pose it forward and backward. And it goes up into his head enough that it won't... Um, you know, slip out or anything like that. So I'm pretty happy with how he's turning out. As I said, they've always been my favourite, and I would have killed for a plush of one of these when I was a kid. So uh, he's just awaiting the final touches now, and the final touches will be um, shading on his ears and detailing on all the suede parts of him, and a little bit of painting on the face so that it's not so skin coloured and he'll look more like his movie counterpart and here he is finally finished his face is all painted and uh, he's all fully shaded and everything like that um, the camera is quite far away from him because as you can see he's pretty big so I'm just gonna go over and show you so he doesn't stand by himself um, just bend his spine up a bit. That's him stood up. Hopefully his head and everything will fit in the shot. So, he, like I said, he doesn't stand by himself, but you can just sort of hold him up like that. I sit him back down again. Uh, I move the camera in a bit closer so you can see him a bit better. 
I'll tell you all about him. So, the head is sort of movable. You can move it back a bit like that. He's got uh, a spine running all the way through his body. As you saw, I sort of tilted his back um, backwards a little bit. His arms are all fully posable. His fingers, again, all fully posable. So he can hold things. Well, he can hold sort of light things. He can't hold anything that's too heavy because the wire's not strong enough in his hands. The legs are not... Um, they're not underwired, so they're not poseable. His ears have got cardboard in them, as I showed you when I was making it. So they're kind of we kind of bent those a little bit. Dad suggested if I overbent them, then it might sort of make the ears a little bit more um, shaped like that. Um, that's the back of him. His tail is also wired. So that bends as well, and he's got his own little label, which is what I put in all my plushies to show that I made them. And then taking a close look at his face here, you can see he's got the eyes that sort of look at you from every direction. I used acrylic paints to do all the painting on his face. So he looks a little bit more like a fiery from the Labyrinth movie. So I'll put him back here. So basically, he's finished. Finally, it's taken about just under two months to get him made. And I think it was worth it. From all the... Uh, from all the sort of hiccups I had in making him and stuff like that. Um, I achieved my goal, I made what I wanted to. Here's my very first polymer clay faced and, and detailed art doll. He turned out a little bit bigger I suppose than I thought. But it doesn't matter too much. He was an experiment and I'm very happy with him. Sort of a prototype so that I've learned a few things while making him. Stuff that I hadn't done before. I overcame obstacles just like I did with Flick. So it's all a learning curve, really. I uh, put him up on Twitter, and the guy who did one of the Fiery's voices actually saw him and was quite impressed. So a big shout out to Danny John Jules. I know you're not watching, but I'll shout you out anyway. Um, if anyone watches Red Dwarf, he was the guy who played the cat, which is one of the roles that he's properly known for. I had no idea he had he did one of the Fiery voices uh, until someone on Twitter informed me of this. So that's cool. So he's actually been this guy's actually been seen by someone who worked on the movie and they approved of him. So I'm I'm happy with how he's turned out. There's a couple of things like the skinny legs and maybe the um the the fluffy bit on the tail, the end of the tail isn't quite wide enough to actually wire into that. But that's pretty much the only issues I have with him. I think that he turned out really well. And he's fully poseable. I'm going to do a proper a proper photo shoot with him at some point and I saved this part of the video I could have done it last night when I came back home because I was out um, I saved it for the morning because I thought oh yeah I'll do it in daylight except the weather is terrible today so I had to do it in artificial light anyway but there you go so I hope you've enjoyed this journey of creativity with me from the start to the finish of this plush and if you want to see how I made a couple of other plushies, there are boxes coming up below. As always, check out my Silver Baby merchandise or buy me a coffee on Kofi if you wish. It really helps because I'm working from home now. And that's all for this video. This is Silver Wolf signing off.